adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Harry Canterbury. There I was, back in the wild again. And I fell right at home, where I belong. I had that feeling coming over me again. Just like it happened so many times before. Hi, Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. Join us down in southwest Florida at our winter home. Uh, we've been down here for about five and a half months. We're headed back to Illinois to get some of those mushrooms, and I sure hope they're up by the time we get back. Got a great show. Guy plays the uh, steel pans, or as you may know them, the steel drums. We're going to say goodbye to our best friends that uh, we have met down here uh, a few years ago. And uh, also, Abel, my buddy from Cuba, who uh, came to this country in 1962 when he was nine years old, has been putting on a hog roast and feeding about 150 people. Well, this was their last party, and uh, it's got to be a lot of work, and uh, they think it's time to retire. So we're going to say goodbye to our good buddy Abel uh, with his pig roast. So stay tuned today for a great show. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsall Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway, Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily, and by Eastport Marina, one of the only marinas in its class between Chicago and St. Louis on Mariner's Way in East Peoria. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. Abel, tell everybody this is the last big year for the party. Yeah, this is going to be the last uh, year we're going to be doing a pig roast for the anniversary. It's getting too old and, a lot of work. and our health doesn't permit. Yeah. But uh, hey. I will still, you know, we'll still be around and do a little, a little smaller version. Yeah, a little a smaller version. Just yeah, mm -hmm. but I should do like throughout the year. Hey, for people that don't know what you're doing, tell everybody again why you do this every year. The reason I do this to celebrate, I call this my freedom pay. The reason I do this to celebrate our uh, my anniversary in this country today, or actually April 19th. But if it's, it's going to fall around Easter, so I decided uh, to do it the weekend before. So uh, I decided to do this just to celebrate our uh, my freedom in this country. That's what, hence the pig roast, yeah, the freedom pig roast. So 57 years that I've been in this country. So every year I try to. So, uh, now tell everybody how you prepare that. That's been in here since seven o'clock this yeah, morning. Seven o'clock this morning, and, and you uh, got that's all cooked on charcoal. It's already cooked on charcoal, yeah. I was doing it with charcoal because that way I can control the heat. And, uh, and it, that was 145 uh, pounds. 142 pounds. 142 pound hog. Yeah. That should feed everybody just just perfectly. Oh, yeah. Now, you can just now what do you cooked. season that? You season that before you put it on? Yeah, with a Spanish marinating sauce it's called mojo. Uh huh. And uh, we married the uh, mojo, which is yeah, basically with sour oranges, and garlic. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of stuff. But anyway, uh, sour oranges and all that stuff. But anyway. So we marinate it with that, and then we'll uh, set it, let's it overnight, and now it should be good to go. And then uh, this is a Cuban Cuban style hog. That's how they cook them. That's how we well, yeah. This is basically how you cook them. <laughs> it's my version of it. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Here we have yeah, like I said, the blocks, cinder blocks, or whatever. So okay, ready? Yes. Sir. Why is it that we don't have the young guys doing this? Because you're, oh, not I mean, you're younger than me, sir. I'll go back. It's all right. <laughs> I'm bilingual. I can walk backwards and forwards. Hi, I'm Abel Jr. And these are pork chunks. This is an old family recipe. I guess you could say there's nothing really fancy about it. Throw pork chunks into some really hot oil. Dan here's going to take you the rest of the way with the seasoning. 
You cut the salt, we got the onion, the fresh lime juice, you put that on there, delicious. Fried crispy. Uh, nice and crispy, nice and mm -hmm. you know, very good, excellent. And then you oh, just, you just call them Cuban, Cuban pork chunk. Yeah, there's Cuban nothing like it, there's nothing like it. It's pork candy. Pork mm -hmm. candy, yeah. Pork candy, wow. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, cheers. Yeah. Working on a turkey you donated. This is the smoked one. Oh man, does that look good? This is the smoked turkey. I yeah, think, that looks delicious. I think he injected it because I'm finding pockets of uh, moho and stuff right here. Oh. So. Well, oh, that looks good. It's coming off. Slicing good. Juice coming out. So. Okay, first of all, I want to thank you all for uh, joining us uh, on this uh, pig, freedom pig roast to celebrate my uh, freedom in this country. Uh, 57 years of freedom. Enjoy the party. We got pig, we got a- uh, uh, Lots of food. Turkey, we got two turkeys. Two turkeys. And we have pig and we have uh, uh, a little bit of alcohol. <laughs> yeah, we have a little alcohol left, and uh, I really uh, did look forward to uh, doing this every year. Yeah. Because I get to see all my neighbors, our friends, and people that I never met that other people bring them. So, hey, yeah, life is good. That. So life is good out here, and. Uh, We've been doing this for yeah. six years. Hey, we down love here. you, man. Yeah. Thank you. And our neighbors. Yeah. Thank you. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you. Again, I want to thank you for your donations. And uh, hey, let's live it up. Enjoy. The food is almost going to be ready. Just a minute. Now, uh, we're going to go in the double doors this time. I laid it out just a little bit different. Good afternoon. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. My name is Abel Viamontes, mm -hmm. and uh, every year I do a pig roast to celebrate my uh, freedom to this country, which is actually April 19th, but we do it since it was Easter next weekend. We did it the weekend before, and we do this. Uh, I, I do a pig roast every year to celebrate my freedom, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a donation, because every year we think of a donation for the disabled American <laughs> veterans, because uh, we love what you guys stand for and how you help our, our disabled veterans. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to uh, give you our donation, that, not my donation, donation for, from about 100 people. Everybody that attended the pick was donated this money for the, for the disabled American veterans. Well, here, here I thought when I see the bag, you were bringing me some roast. No, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. That I comes later. you were bringing me some food, <laughs> but, uh, how much is in there? It's uh, eight hundred and fifty dollars. Wow! So wow. I hope that helps you keep on the light. Yeah, to it, keep the lights it on. It helps us immensely because you walking in the door. That's why we're here. We're here for veterans who walk through that door to be able to assist them with with their needs. Right. Uh, whether it's something that happened to them, whether it's a family member whose uh, husband or loved one died. Uh, we're here to help them, and uh, our, our thing is doing enough or having people like you come in and give us a donation right. like this that keeps that yeah. door open for the next veteran that we don't have right. to turn somebody yeah. away. And uh, it's very generous, and I, um, I, I don't know how to thank you. Uh, hey, give oh, me a oh. <laughs> And, well, uh, thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been thank a pleasure. You. And uh, God bless you all. And thank you for your service. Thank you, service. Thank you for your service as well. Thank I you. Yeah. Have to go. <laughs> got to go home and start working on another pig. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is
this is my good friend Sharon Dooley. And and my we're, friend, the <laughs> Yes. We're having dinner tonight with Sharon and Dave, and they're our best friends down here in Florida. We've had a great winter, done a lot of stuff, met a lot of people, had a lot of dinners and parties and boating and drinking. some fishing. <laughs> yes, a little drinking. But uh, it's been a wonderful f uh, winter down in Fort Myers and Port Charlotte, Florida. I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. We've talked about concealed carry in the past, and since that time, they've come out with some new uh, firearms and some new holsters. For an example, we have a new Glock 43. It's a nine millimeter. It's a slim frame, inline magazine, and a nine millimeter caliber. For the lady in your family, we have the same pistol in a pink and stainless. A little smaller Glock would be a 380, which is also available in black. Coming up to the top here, we have a LCP2, which recently came out in a 380, small compact. Also in a 380, a Smith & Wesson bodyguard. And below that is a Smith & Wesson shield with a laser. Most of these guns, you can get lasers for them. Here's a new pistol from uh, SIG. It's a nine millimeter, extreme, uh, micro nine from Kimber, and the small micro 380 also from Kimber. Revolvers are also a good choice. Here's a Smith Wesson Bodyguard 38 Special, hammerless, lightweight, easy to conceal. And then a Smith & Wesson Stainless, again, uh, pink grip, which is available also with uh, black and in a blue finish. In uh, holsters, there's been a lot of new holsters coming out. This is a sticky holster. It's made to tuck inside your pants and kind of grips your pants and your shirt. There's ankle holsters, pancake holsters, which you still have to have that covered with a coat or a uh, untucked shirt. This is a shoulder holster and then inside the pocket and this is a uh, pancake style holster and uh, synthetic and it's got a quick release button. You hit the button and the pistol pops out. If you're a lady and would like a purse they make concealed carry purses with holsters built in and that would be a good choice uh, easy to carry. I'm Dave Barth with your sportsman's tip of the week. My name is Tim Delaney. My stage name is Steely Pan. I live in Cape Coral, Florida, which is near Fort Myers, Florida. Hey, I'm here with a special guy. And uh, Tim is from uh, Cape Coral, Florida, originally from the Bloomington area. Tim, give us a uh, little idea of how you all got started in this uh, beautiful music. Well, I uh, first saw steel drums in Disneyland back in uh, 1972. I was in front of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. They had a steel band out there promoting the ride, and I just fell in love with the sound. And my parents actually had to drag me away from the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean ride, uh, kicking and screaming because I love the sound so much. Um, and that memory just kind of engraved in my brain. Well, after Disneyland, I got into drums. My mom bought me my first drum set, and I played drums through high school and uh, in college and graduated from Illinois State University with a degree in uh, music therapy. I've always loved being a musician, uh, but I got the degree just to uh, make my mom and dad happy that I, I got a, a solid career job. Uh, it wasn't long after that, back in 96, that I was reintroduced to the steel drum. They're a little bit more readily available uh, on the internet. Uh, they're builders in the USA. So in 1996, I ordered my first set of pans from Cliff Alexis, who was a pan builder, tuner, and ranger at Northern Illinois University. Uh, Tim, uh, the question is, a lot of people are not familiar with this, of these instruments. Um, they started in Trinidad right after World War II. Can you get everybody an idea how that all happened? Well, the, the evolution of the steel pan is very beautiful. It actually started out with a lot of slave immigrants coming to Trinidad and Tobago. 
and a lot of the immigrants spoke different languages. This is people from India, people from Africa, people from China. And they would be put all in the slave camps and they would work the sugarcane fields, which was a big thing in Trinidad and uh, Tobago. Well, since these people didn't speak the same language, they tried to communicate with each other by some common form, and this common form was music. So one group of ethnicity would bring, say, their drums with a, a group, another ethnicity would bring bells, another ethnicity would bring shakers, and they'd get together and they'd create music, play music. The, the language was not the same, but the music was the same. They all gained unity through music. Well, the slave owners and the plantation owners really didn't like this unity. They feel that the, the slaves would reprise and, and try to um, break out of their slavery. So they banned all the music and the instruments. They took them away uh, and the slaves went back to work. Well, back uh, then it was that they had an emancipation like we did here that freed the slaves. Well, during this time, they went to the junkyards and they picked up pieces of metal and started banging them in celebration and parades around the uh, uh, streets of Trinidad and Tobago. And they started creating different types of metal bands and music. Well, some of the instruments or pieces of metal they used were biscuit tins uh, or kerosene tins. And what they would do, they would hit these tins and, and tops of the metal tops and they would start to cave in. Uh, well, they didn't like that sound, so they go in there and start pushing that metal up to get a more raspier sound. And of course, if they hit it more, it would cave in more. Well, they found that those little concave uh, surfaces had little bumps in them. And when they hit those different bumps, they, they heard different sounds. So they got the idea of creating an instrument with different controlled bumps, uh, different sizes to create melodic instruments. Uh, well, they used the biscuit tins and, and the kerosene tins for a while, but the metal was very uh, thin and didn't last long. Well, the Navy had uh, oil shipyards there, and they discarded barrels. And they thought, well, let's go get these barrels and start making instruments out of the barrels because the metal is a lot tougher and stronger, and we could put a lot more notes in there. And that's how they kind of developed the steel pan by just accident. You know, we've learned a lot about the pan, but I'm really excited to uh, watch you perform on these pans. And you've been doing this since when? Since 1996. 1996. So you've been playing these pans for an awful long time. Yes. You know. But uh, anyway, uh, thanks for the, the great interview, and we're going to go uh, take a look at uh, some of your pans and uh, listen to some of your music. Okay. Harry, this is a lead pan or tenor pan, some call it. This was made by a company called Panyard Incorporated out of Akron, Ohio. This is a top of the line steel drum and it's featured in a video uh, of how it's made. This company is shown how they make their steel drum. Uh, it's got about 29 notes. It's chrome plated, made out of metal. And underneath, Yeah, I can see that, yeah. No microphones, it's an acoustic instrument. Well, what song should we? Well, let's start with, since it's from Trinidad and Tobago, huh? let's do a old folk song okay. from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. This is called Old Lady Walk a Mile huh? and a Half, or some know it as Tilly. Uh, there's other names for it. Okay. Just a beautiful tune. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. Now, what, what are these now? These are uh, old-time pans. They're made by Panyard Incorporated, and basically what they're supposed to emulate is the old-time sound of the steel drums from back in the 50s, 60s. Uh, they just have the basic tonal sound, and they're very simple drums. This would be 
the single second. And this is the lead hand. And that's the lead hand. And that's real similar to what you just played. No. Not. Different sound. Different sound. Similar setup, different sound. I'll be darn. More of a. A woody marimba type sound. Okay. To it. Harry, this is a replica of a steel drum. They call it an old time pan from the 50s and 60s. Uh, it was made by the same company that made my, my great sounding pan, uh, Pan Yard Incorporated. And they created instruments from the 50s and 60s to kind of give that old time sound. And hopefully you can tell the difference between this pan and the one inside. I'm playing with mallets that would have been made from that era. Basically what they did was take rubber, not this is not tubing, but it's just a piece of rubber and wrap it around and kind of tuck it in. Um, on a dowel rod. So this is the old time type of mallet set that we'd use. Now when you're playing a steel drum it's hung on a stand and basically you got little nylon hoops here on a metal stand and sometimes they come with wheels. There's different configurations of stands um, but basically you want to have something sturdy and holding it sturdy because you've got a very big investment here. You don't want it to drop and fall. And I've seen plenty of videos where these have broken and dropped and fall. So we're going to play a tune here on this steel drum. Setup is pretty similar to the one in there. It just sounds a little different. This is a tune called The Hammer by Rudder, David Rudder, and it was uh, also done by Andy Norell. Here's one of my favorite songs by Harry Belafonte. It's called Coconut Woman.
I want to thank Tim for the uh, great display of the steel pans. This guy is a very accomplished uh, player. I don't think I'll ever get there. I'm going to try Margaritaville. They say that's the easiest uh, one to learn. I think it's the funnest one. To yeah, it's the funnest one, and everybody will know what it is when I play it. But I want to thank uh, Tim for uh, allowing us to come to his home and showing uh, us how to play the pans. And uh, you're pretty busy all the week. Usually uh, you've got uh, anywhere from three to six uh, yeah. six sets a, yeah. a week. And yeah, and it's great the variety of where I'm playing on the beach. I'm in playing in resorts. So I never get tired. It's not like sitting in a cubicle in an office. Right. Uh, each day is kind of like a new adventure. Instead. Yeah, and being down here in, in sunny Florida. Well, yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. You know, in February it was 50 below, and it got cold down here. It got down to 62, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, we love uh, southwest Florida. A lot of great people down here. Of course, Tim, you know, is from, uh, from Illinois, too. And little Zena, where did Zena come from? Well, she came from Cape Coral here. Oh, so she's she a was, native. She was Florida born. She, she's a cracker she? dog. Yes, she is. She's <laughs> <laughs> a cracker dog. All righty. Hey, we'll see you next month. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsall Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's Riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. And by Eastport Marina, one of the only marinas in its class between Chicago and St. Louis, on Mariner's Way in East Peoria. Our thanks to all of these sponsors.